Future Warfare is a 2D strategy game where you can either play as the Galaxians or the Dreadnoughts. Each of these factions have their own unique units that you can purchase to battle it out in each round. These rounds will continue to repeat until one of the player's bases have been destroyed. As usual, I like to create the concept of the unit first, so that I can develop a better idea of what this unit is going to look like. This time around, I used some references to help me come up with the design of the body for the War Machine. And no, I did not reference a Myrlik from Fallout 3. A good amount of the process is just me literally trying out random stuff until I see something that sticks. Now that we have the finished concept art, we can now use this for the purchasing card and the Q icon. Next up, we're going to start working on the walking animation for the War Machine. I'm going to use the concept art as a reference and my challenge is to translate it from that point of view of the War Machine to a side view. So as I'm working on the side view of the War Machine, I was just getting hit with random ideas of ways I could add more detail or color. And I just thought it would be silly not to improve the original design if I can find ways to. Ultimately, I'm pretty happy with the new design. I also added some shading to add some 3D-ness. Now we can start working on the walking animation, which consists of 16 frames. Let's get it. Whenever I start a walking animation, for me personally, I like to start with the boots. Because that is going to be the part that's going to be making contact with the ground. And it's a lot easier to figure out the orientation of the legs based off of the orientation of the boots. Originally, I was designing the legs of the War Machine to be similar to the previous Dreadnoughts, but well, it's a machine, so I should have it have more of a mechanical feel to it and look. So instead of having like a regular knee, I decided to put like a ball connected to some pistons underneath the armor and put a metal plate right on top of the ball. And this is going to give the War Machine a much more mechanical look to it which I like. Of course, we need to add a back leg as well. Then we will animate it just like we did with the front leg. Cool, this is what we have for the animation so far. I think the legs flow really nicely. So I'm very pleased with that. However, the body is a bit jarring. It goes back and forth very abruptly so I'm going to go back in each of the frames and try to fix that and smooth out the upper portion I'm also going to add in some shading for the pistons for each of the frames all right so now we have a side-by-side -side comparison of before and after the adjustments and we can see that it looks way less janky I was looking back at the design of the war machine and something just fell off with the gun. The look I want to go for for the war machine is like a Gatling laser gun since the war machine has a fast fire rate. Currently it just looks like a cannon with a plunger stuck on the end. So for the new design I thought it would be better to break up the one big cannon into two smaller ones that the war machine will alternate between. And on the frames that the gun has been fired, a large amount of energy is going to be discharged, so we have to show that visually. And not only that, the light from the discharge energy is going to be reflected off of the war machine, since the war machine is made of metal. So I'm going to show that here, and maybe some of that light will be reflected off of the legs as well. Here's our final attack animation for the War Machine. And with the added light being discharged, I think it looks pretty cool, making the War Machine seem a lot more powerful. 
And of course we need to create the laser. And there's not much to say here other than I drew like a capsule-like shape and started blending in colors. Now since we have two different guns, we have a top and bottom gun, we're going to need two separate fire points, or in other words, two different locations of where to spawn in the lasers. Awesome, so I just pretty much copy and pasted some code from previous Dreadnought uh, units, and I also added in some code for the laser so that the Galaxians do take damage once they are hit by it. Alright, so we already touched on the Gatling laser attack mode for the War Machine, and there's going to be one more attack mode, which is going to be a missile. And as you can see, this long box right here is the representation of the range of the Gatling laser. And then this tall skinny box here is going to be the range of the missile. If there is a Galaxian within this spot, then the War Machine will fire a missile up and over and right back down. And it's also worth noting that both the Gatling laser and the missiles can be fired at once. So let's just say, for example, there's two Galaxians up in the front two spots. And there's also a third one in the back. The front two will be hit by the Gatling laser while the missile will be laid out on the back. All right, now it's time to design the missile. And I think the inspiration I took from it was like a warhead. Originally, I wasn't gonna have any animation from the missile comes down, but I decided to try it out and settled with four total frames. And if I'm being honest, this whole process of creating this animation, I had no idea what I was doing for like the first three quarters of it was just doing random stuff until I started creating uh, a meterist type animation, which veered very far off from what I originally was going to do. I was going to do the warhead just hits the ground and it causes an explosion. Alright, that should do it. So let's see what the final result looks like. We have, we're going to spawn in two miners and then the war machine. And keep in mind, the War Machine is the strongest Dreadnought unit and the most expensive. So it should make pretty quick work of these guys. And the missile does do a lot of damage, but as you can see, it's pretty hard to land it. The War Machine generally should be able to end the game, unless the other player has some pretty good defenses. And it is super good at sieging the Galaxian base.